Hello everyone, Dr. Data Science here to teach you data science methods and tools today, tomorrow, and beyond. This is the fourth video in the Machine Learning with Imbalanced Data series. In previous videos, we discussed the class imbalance problem, where the number of samples in one class is far less than the total number of instances in other classes. Imbalanced data sets are prevalent in computer vision, healthcare data analysis, business, and finance. For example, in the binary classification problem on the FIRO dataset, the minority class is positive class and the majority class is negative class. If we apply a standard machine learning algorithms, they are likely to predict most labels as negative or the majority class, giving us misleading accuracy results. In this video, we discuss a resampling method known as undersampling for addressing the class imbalance problem. As mentioned before, various strategies to tackle the class imbalance problem can be divided into three main categories. The first one is data level pre-processing methods, which operate on the training data set, and these methods change class distributions using resampling techniques. Therefore, they aim to alter data sets in order to more make standard machine learning algorithms work. In other words, in contrast to cost-sensitive learning, we don't modify loss functions because of the pre-processing step. In this video, we mainly discuss undersampling techniques, which remove samples from the training data set that belong to the majority class in order to better balance the class distribution. The simplest undersampling technique involves randomly selecting examples from the majority class and deleting them from the training data set. To understand how we can implement this simple type of undersampling, let's again work with the thyroid data set, which consists of about 6% positive or plus 1 target values, and the remainder are labeled as negative, which form the uh, majority class. We use the train test split from CycleLearn to divide the data set into training and test sets, to implement undersampling and other popular imbalanced learning strategies, we use the Imbalanced Learn Library, which is an open source library uh, developed in Python and can be downloaded from the link provided here. The first step is to import random undersampler and then we provide as inputs the training data set, including features and labels. So we give X train and Y train, and the outputs are X train resampled and Y train resampled. Then we use mp.unique on the Y train resampled array. In this case, we can make sure that uh, the class ratio is one to one. Next, we train two logistic regression classifiers on the original imbalanced training data and the resample data using random undersampler. The test data sets will be used to plot the confusion metrics in both cases. According to these results, we notice that the undersampling technique substantially reduces the number of false negatives. That is, out of 78 positive samples, we are able to correctly classify 68 of them. This is a major improvement over feeding a classifier on the original imbalanced data, where we have a large number of false positives. For implementing random undersampling, we can skip the imbalanced learn package and simply use NumPy. To see this procedure, we create a random matrix X containing five elements or rows, each one with two attributes or features that they are in the columns. Next, we use random.choice, where the goal is to randomly pick two numbers out of 0 to 4. Remember that indexing starts from 0 and the endpoint is excluded. Then we can pass this random array to subset the rows of x, which will give us the last two rows of the matrix x 
because the int array has two values, three and four. Next, we talk about a more advanced undersampling technique known as prototype generation. Here, we apply the k-means clustering algorithm to the majority class to partition the data into a predefined number of clusters. We then use cluster centroids or centers as representatives or reduced data points. Therefore, instead of directly sampling from the data, we will generate artificial samples that represent the majority class. To implement this technique, we can use cluster centroids from the imbalanced learn library, which we have reported as uh, imbalanced learn here. Therefore, this method allows us to balance the number of samples per each class. And as we see here, using the np.unique similar to before, we can make sure that the distribution, the class distribution is one to one. Like the previous example, we can compare the performance of classifiers trained on the original imbalanced data and the undersampled data using prototype generation technique. Based on these confusion matrices, we conclude that undersampling using cluster centroids is extremely effective in terms of reducing the number of false negatives, which can be crucial for applications such as healthcare data analysis. As we see here, out of 78 positive cases, we can correctly identify 76 of them, which is a recall score, which is very close to one. However, this approach led to a modest increase in the number of false positives. As mentioned before, the cost associated with a false positive and a false negative depends on the application. Among data level pre-processing methods and cost sensitive learning, which we have seen so far in this video series, prototype generation has achieved the highest recall score. Thank you for watching and I hope you have found this imbalanced learning series helpful.